Good morning. <coughs> Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, Merry Christmas uh, to those of you in Australia. And uh, I know this is a very special time uh, for all South Sudanese people, especially uh, South Sudanese who are Christian, who believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for those of you who are joining us. I know today is a very special day. Many of you are spending time with your families and your loved ones. I understand if uh, so many of you are unable to tune in for the program, but I'm grateful to those of you who are able to do so. Uh, we have been doing this program now consistently uh, for several weeks, almost two months now, and uh, if I could not have continued without your support. Uh, I'm so grateful to many of you uh, who have tuned in, who have uh, made comments, uh, who have continued to engage with us in this program. Uh, without you, uh, there's not much we could have done. But because of your support, uh, this program uh, has been able to open the eyes of so many South Sudanese people to the realities that are happening in our country. So uh, let me start by thanking you. And for those of you who are joining, uh, please, as I always say, share the video so that other South Sudanese people may have access to this message. Uh, share it on your wall, uh, share it uh, on your uh, on, on messenger, share it in the WhatsApp group. The message today is going to be very short and it will be very simple. Uh, today is Christmas. Uh, this is the, one of the most important days in the Christian calendar. Uh, those of you who believe in Jesus Christ, I don't really need to explain much about Christmas because you know the importance of this. This day is the foundation of our faith. And without it, there wouldn't be Christianity. So Merry Christmas uh, to you, especially those in Australia. I know it's already early morning. It's a special time to celebrate with your families. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, may this year uh, that we have gone through, which has only uh, a week left, made it end with blessing. And may 2024, the year we have been waiting for, the year we have been waiting for is 2024. Uh, I'm excited, and I hope many of you are also excited. So may 2024 be a wonderful year. May it be the year of freedom when the people of South Sudan will take their country back. The message I want to share with you today I just want to reflect a little bit about Christmas. As a child growing up during the war and in the refugee camps, this was one of the most joyous occasions that we looked forward to. And although we had difficulties back then as people in the bush struggling, uh, the SPLA administration had always tried uh, to make sure that Christmas was a time of peace and it was a time of harmony. It was a time when South Sudanese people reflected on their values, on their faith. You all know that we endured persecution for many years. Our brothers from North Sudan wanted to make us Muslim. And our people for generations resisted. And because of that resistance, it is the reason why we are still here today and why we are able to, to celebrate this day. So I remember uh, during the liberated areas, uh, during the refugee camps, whether in Ethiopia, in Uganda, uh, in Kenya, this was always a day of celebration. Uh, there was also the march, the Masira, uh, that used to be done on the 24th. And I know today, in many cities across South Sudan, a lot of young people are coming out in large numbers. And they are walking, celebrating, marching to welcome the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to welcome him in their hearts. And it is a, a tradition that we have always celebrated. So although uh, many of us are not in South Sudan to celebrate this day with you all, we celebrate with you in spirit and in our hearts. And we are sending you all the blessings and all the protection that God Almighty may bring to you all. 2023 has not been an easy year, especially for South Sudan. Many families, as we speak, are enduring all kinds of hardships. People are suffering. They have no food on the table. 
young children who are expecting gifts, they will not be receiving much because their families, their parents, have nothing to give them. Many uh, officials that work in the government will be celebrating this Christmas without their salaries. You remember recently the Minister of Finance announced that they were going to pay the salary for August in December. But until now, that salary has not come. And many families are stranded. Children that were expecting at least a new cloth, a new pair of shoes, they will be receiving nothing. And they will be disappointed. And the disappointment pain us very, very deeply. But we know that as South Sudanese people, what has always kept us alive is not simply because we get food or we get water or we get shelter, basic needs of life. That is not what has kept us alive. What has kept us alive is the abundance of hope in our hearts. And this has always allowed us to withstand any kind of challenges. I remember one of the hardest Christmas that I celebrated with the Christmas of 1991. That was a especially difficult time in the history of our struggle. There had been division by then. Our people had torn against each other. They were killing each other. We had lost our bases in Ethiopia. Many of us were virtually starving across South Sudan. There was famine. There was no logistical support. There was flood. There was aerial bombardment from the enemy. And it was a very difficult moment. But what gave us energy was being together, being together in our suffering, being able to hold each other's hand, being each other keeper. So as people of South Sudan, I want you to remember those difficult moments because those moments are the moments that made us to who we are today. And that is why we are indomitable people. No matter how much a dictator may try to crush us, such dictatorship would never succeed. No matter how much in, uh, one individual want to turn us into psychopaths and slaves and matographs and all of these things, our hearts will never, our hearts, will never give in. Our hearts will always be strong. They will always beat with love, with determination, and with search for a better future. That is what our history tells us. And because of what we have overcome, we are extremely confident of where we are heading. So I want people across South Sudan today many of whom are having difficulties, who are struggling to meet basic needs, who are facing violence, whether it is in con in con in, uh, intercommunal violence that is being a sponsor by our failed leadership from Juba, whether it is those who are facing hardships in terms of environmental challenges that they face, like floods, whether it is those who are not able to have good shelter, whether those who are unable to have food, all those things, regardless of whatever you face, we are with you in the spirit, and we salute you, and we encourage you to continue to hope and to continue to believe. What makes Christmas amazing is the promise that God Almighty can come to earth in a form of human being. That is the greatest miracle. And it is also at the same time the greatest thing about humanity and why we as human beings, we are not just only those of the world. Uh, Paul talks about this in his epistles. We are not just only of this world. Yes, part of us is of this world. We are made of dust. And if you read the Bible from Genesis, God picked up uh, soil and made the man. But also, most importantly, he breathed in his spirit into him. 
So we are partly divine. We are not just only made of dust. We accept the part that is made of dust, but there is part of us that is divine, that is godly, that cannot be crushed by any, anything that this world has. That part, no matter what, will always return to God Almighty. And that is what we should always remember. That is why we cannot just think only of the needs of the flesh. Yes, the flesh is there, and it has many needs, and they have to be provided. But that is not, that is not it. That is not everything about us. Paul talked about this, and Christ also talked about it, that you seek my kingdom, and all the other things will be given to you. So, Give to God what is God. And God doesn't require much. It requires only a clear conscience for your mind to be clear, to avoid committing evil, knowing that it is evil. And as long as your conscience is clear, you will always have a space on the table of God. It does not mean that we are righteous and that we are incapable of sin. One of the things that make human being a human being is ignorant. Most of the time we don't know. And that is why people say as we grow in life, we continue to learn. And this learning never ends until the day that we leave the world. Many of us who are highly educated, we know this. Because regardless of how many books you have read, and how many books you continue to read, there is just so much that you still don't know about the world and that you probably will never know. Even if you live to be 900 years like Abraham, I mean like Adam and Noah and others that came before, even if you live for that long, you will still have a lot not to know about the world. So we are always learning, we are always knowing. And as we are doing that, there are, we are living in the world. And we, as we live in the world, we make mistakes. And that is okay. God knows. He's the one who made us. But as long as we act with sincere heart, even when we make mistakes, God is able to forgive us. What makes sin a sin is not simply because a bad thing or a bad act has been committed. It is the knowledge, the intentional knowledge of committing something that is bad. That is what makes sin a sin. Because sin come from, the, come from thinking. And that is why in uh, legal discourses, no one can be accused of a, of a crime or taken to a crime, especially crime like murder, without intent. There has to be intent to commit a crime. Right? That's one of the foundation. And that is one of the things that a good prosecutor has to prove in advance, that there was an intent to commit a terrible act. So when we intentionally err and we do bad things to one another, we are committing evil. We are engaging in terrible deeds. And these are the things that God will hold us accountable for. But if we repent, if we intentionally commit a mistake, and then later on we repent, then God is able to forgive us and shower us with his endless mercy. So let this Christmas be a time of reflection. All of us, we fall short of the glory of God. We are not here to point fingers and accuse anyone, because even we ourselves, we are wanting in many ways. There are so many areas in which we are hunting, we are, we are wanting. But let it be a time for all of us to reflect and to prepare our hearts, regardless of how, however many d evil deeds we have committed this year. Let us take this moment to open our hearts, to allow the light, the light of Christ, 
the divine light to come into our heart. Let's prepare our heart to receive the Son of God so that his presence in our soul may renew us so that we may be different. That was the purpose that Christ came. And as I said before, it's a great miracle that God Almighty will come on earth in the form of a human being. And that is why in Christianity, as you all know, we talk about Christ as the new Adam. The original Adam was made by God. He was a man made in the image of God. You read this very clearly in Genesis. When God, the Trinity God, when they said, let's create the man in our own image. And they pick up dust to mold man in the image of God. But what is Christ? Christ is the exact opposite. Is God made in the image of man? So that the fall that happened with Adam may be reversed and man may be sanctified. So it's a great miracle. And Christ, what he did, he opened the way for us. He has, he is the first bone is the new creation that all of us are to mold. So his birth is absolutely amazing for all of us. It's something that we should all reflect on. And as we welcome him, let us also accept to change. Let us allow ourselves to, to be recreated in that divine image. It is possible, even for the vilest thinner, uh, uh, sinner, it is possible. All that is required is repentance. And God Almighty can always open a new chapter for each and every one of us. All we need is to clear our conscience, to stop doing evil deeds, and begin doing what is right. And what is right? We are not going to do it to God Almighty. We are going to do it to our brothers and sisters that we see, that we live with on this earth. And that is why Christ talked about when he will come during the day of judgment, he will say, you, when I was sick, you did not visit me. When I was arrested, you did not visit me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. And they will ask, when did we not do those things to you? And the son of man would res respond and say, if you didn't do it to any of your brothers, then he didn't do it to me. And that was the same thing he would say to those who did those. We are on a great experiment. Not the experiment of Christianity and divine recreation, but we are also an experiment as a nation called South Sudan. Yes, we are communities, we are tribes, we know where we come from, but we are embarking on something bigger to create a nation. A nation for all of us, for all our tribes. Are we prepared to give this nation a chance? to give this South Sudan a chance, to not just see each other as Zande, Lotuko, Anyuak, Taposa, Nuer. Are we ready to begin that experiment in a very honest way? Yes, I know we are unfortunately being divided by leaders leaders that are supposed to unite us, leaders that are only pursuing selfish deeds. But for them, there is a lot to be read in the books of kings. See, God Almighty has been around for a very long time, and the Holy Bible has lessons for each and every one of us. 
even the mightiest king, they were ultimately humbled. Those who divided people, they reap the benefits of their action. That one is there. And I have no doubt, in our particular case, 2024 is coming. But that is not the point I want to dwell on. What I want to dwell on is the power that you and I have as citizens of South Sudan. That whether this experiment of building a new nation called South Sudan would become a reality or not, is not simply in the hands of the leaders. We are just as much architects of such a vision as they are. It's not only up to them. If we decide that we want this, we unite and we work for it, we can achieve it. We can achieve it no matter what the obstacles the leaders put in front of us. We just have to believe. And as I promise you, this show is not going to be long. So I want to reflect on the three principles of our faith, of Christianity. Paul talked about this in the book of Corinthians. These values first is faith. You have to believe in God Almighty. Not simply because he exists, because that is obvious. He exists. So it's not about believing that he is there. That is not simply the point. But truly knowing him, seeking him, understanding him, understanding your connection to him. And all you need to do, put your hand into your heart and listen to that beating of your heart. And just imagine that miracle by itself. That is your connection. God is within you. He lives within you. And that is why Christ said, my father and I are one. He's in me and I'm in him. And that is the same for every single one of us. Through faith, we can open our mind to understand the mind of God. Cosmic mind. But there is a second element that can truly open it up. And that is love. Pure love. Not love of self. Love of humanity. Love of your fellow being. The biggest commandment, as Christ summarized, is to love God Almighty with all your heart and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. <clears throat> what does that mean? To love your neighbor as you love yourself. Is to be there for him, for her. To fight for him, to fight for her to do good for him and for her. That is what it means. We have a nation today where few have hijacked the resources. This salary that was supposed to be paid, it was taken by a few individuals and they went and took the money and put it in their pockets. While millions, while millions are stranded with nothing. That is not loving your neighbor. We have a nation today where individuals are carrying guns, terrorizing their fellow citizens. That is not loving your neighbor. We have a nation today where leaders, custodians of the people, are hunting, hunting their fellow citizens with the intention to kill them. Even those who have fled to foreign countries, being hunted, that is not loving your neighbor. We have a nation where today, Citizens are gossiping, spreading lies and rumors about their fellow beings. That is not loving your neighbor. You have also a, a nation where people come and manufacture lies so that they can get advantage, get positions, get money. That is not loving your neighbor. Loving your neighbor is to suffer with your neighbor. 
to feel his pain, to speak for him, to do good for him, to think about tomorrow. Because we are not of this world alone. Our time here is very short. And we have to accept that because that is the foundation of building a deeper relationship among ourselves and with God Almighty. So love is a critical aspect of our faith. So in this Christmas, let's open our heart to love. To love God, to love one another. The third element of our faith is hope. Hope. Paul talked about this. Is the knowledge of things. Faith is the knowledge of things yet to come. But hope is the belief that those things will happen. That light will always triumph over darkness. And you know this because even at night when it is the darkest is when you know that the dawn is about to come. You must always hope. We hope in the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will come. And we hope. We believe he will come. And despite all the suffering we go through, the joy we will have with his return will be endless. That is the essence of our faith. We must hope. I know South Sudan now, we are in, facing a lot of problems. But we must continue to hope. Because, believe me, brothers and sisters, things are going to get better. Better days are yet to come. It may be hard to believe, but I promise you, better days are coming. And prepare yourselves to delight in the abundance of God Almighty. This land that has now become a land of the shadow has become a valley of the death. This land will be a land of light. And it will shine, radiating light across our entire continent and across the world. And God will manifest this in your lifetime. You will live to see it. Don't allow yourself to be led astray by the needs of the flesh. Those needs can never be met, ever, no matter how much wealth you accumulate. The only thing that can meet that hole within your heart is Jesus Christ. When you believe in him, you have everything, because he is everything. He's everything that a human being could possibly need. He's the living water. John's talk about this. When you drink from him, from his fountain, you can never thirst. So my people, let's remember to have faith, to love one another, and to hope. With these things, we can overcome everything. Let's continue to grow. Let's grow in these three things. Let's grow in faith. Let's grow in love. Let's grow in hope. And as we do so, there's nothing anyone would ever do to crush us because we will be uncrushable. And indeed, we are already uncrushable. But as we consolidate this unity, we will be able to manifest the promises of God to our people. Don't forget, our land is the land flowing with milk and honey. You may not be delighting in those things right now, but time is fast coming when every single child of South Sudan will get what is rightfully his or her. Our God is a God that does not make false promises. He makes promises that will be found. So my people, Merry Christmas. May God Almighty bless you. And 
May you and your family have every single blessing. Don't forget to pray about our nation. Pray about our people. And pray for change. That God Almighty may give us better leaders in 2024. Leaders that will radiate the plan of God in our people. That will unite our people. That will comfort our people. That will bring our people together. And we as South Sudanese people, let us consolidate our unity. I wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas. And I wish you a Happy New Year 2024. A year of change where our country will finally begin to make progress toward the realization of God's plan for the people of God in Sudan and South Sudan. That year is coming. and We must be prepared. Let us not be like the five virgins that did not prepare their lamps. Let, have, let us be like the wise, the five that had oil in their lamp, so that when the groom arrived, they will be ready. So each and every one of you, prepare your heart. Prepare to receive God in your heart. Believe in him. Love your, one another. Love your neighbor. And hope. Because the better things that we have been waiting for are coming. God bless you. Till the next time. Please share the video. And I look forward to engaging.